Hey guys, it's Tom Box here. Welcome to MST TV's Savage Strike Set Analysis Part 1. Secret Rares and Hype Cards. If you're in it for the Hype Cards and the Secret Rares, this is the one and done video. Then you can be on your way so that you don't have to watch Part 2. If you want the more thorough analysis and perhaps find hidden gems, then you can stick around for Part 2, which is the full set analysis of Savage Strike. And I want to give a huge shout out to my most recent Patreons for them. Uh, they are the ones that are making it possible for me to do what I like, and that counts for all Patreons we have. Oliver, we have Samuels, we have Ethicon, and we also have Gerard. All of you guys, huge thank you for pledging and believing in my ability to make videos for you guys and kind of stabilizing what I'm doing here. Now this set is quite interesting and lots of support going all around. It's a great time to be a Yu-Gi-Oh player and a great time to come back to Yu-Gi-Oh. And we'll talk about that right now. Let's jump to the secret rares right now. All right, let's list off the secret rares. We have Pot of Indulgence, which we will know as Pot of Extravagance in TCG, uh, which is Strike. Uh, Phantasme, the Illusion Dragon, or Illusion Dragon Phantasme. Psychic Wielder, Trickstar Live Stage, so we got a Secret Rare Trickstar card now. Uh, TG Trident Launcher, their Link Monster, this is a TCG exclusive. Super Anti Kaiju War Machine, Mecha Thunder King, so part of like the Anti Kaiju stuff. This one actually feels like a more appropriate hand trap for Anti Kaiju. And then we have Valkyrie Seshed, okay, so that's the exclusive Valkyrie that feels like a tour guide. Looking into these cards, uh, let's break them down and then we'll go into some of the hype cards right after. Uh, pot of Indulgence slash Extravagance. This is a very interesting pot card in my opinion. It's Merge of Pot of Greed and Jar of Avarice. Yeah, that's Jar of Avarice. Why is it interesting? Well, it's not like it's a pot card that's for everyone. Every single pot card seems to fit into a category whether, uh, depending on whether or not the deck can use it, except for maybe Pot of Desires. Well, Pot of Desires too, because Pot of Desires, if you're running a lot of one ofs you wouldn't play the card in your deck. Uh, so it's uh, multi-copy, and then you get multiple draws. And then for Pot of Duality, it's a deck that doesn't rely on special summoning early so that you can set up and get additional resources. For Pot of Extravagance, it's for those who do not have a draw engine themselves and have extra space available in the extra deck, and they're not extra deck reliant. So every single pot card seems to have their own design towards very specific decks so that it's still very generic and it's still very much sought after. So in terms of the card effect, at the start of the main phase one, banish three or six cards face down uh, from your extra deck and you banish it randomly too so you have to shuffle up. So make sure you have the right sleeves and then draw one card for every three card you banish. So you draw one card, you draw two cards. Also you cannot draw cards with card effects for the rest of the turn which is why I said you can have a draw engine if you want to play this, and it has to be the very first thing you activate. Unless there's some sort of quick play spell that lets you draw cards, you can chain it on top of this, then you can get additional draws. Outside of that, you're kind of stuck and you're bummed out of luck there. And uh, that means if you're playing Sky Striker, not very ideal because first of all, your extra deck space is already quite tight. And if you banish the wrong set of monsters, that's not going to work well for you. It's like getting punished by a pot of desires. Uh, <laughs> except that this time you're just losing like Kagaris and like Shizukus and that really sucks. So it's not likely to see it in their deck per se. Uh, yeah, but in terms of price point, I would say it's going to be like a $40 to $50 card right from the, out of the gate. And... It might not actually raise high enough, but that's going to be format dependent. If there's a deck that doesn't have a draw engine, but has a really good search engine, and this card gives them extra reach while not relying on the extra deck, it will go back up. And uh, it's just one of those things that are just very format dependent. I can see Alter Geist definitely using this one because they don't really have a draw engine to begin with. And second of all, they don't really rely on a special summon in their very first turn. They rather get into that digging up hand traps, or not hand traps, but actual traps. And as for the extra deck, they really care about Hexia and Link Karibo, and that's really what they need to focus on. And everything else is just a bit extra. Next, which is Strike, uh, the anti-solemn trap card. There is a couple of things I want to put to note here, which is if your opponent negates a normal or special summon, so you have to negate the summon altogether, or negates the activation of a card or effect, destroy all, destroy all cards your opponent controls and in their hand. So it's a complete blow when this card works, and it almost feels like the condition of waking the dragon, where your opponent makes a mistake and they basically lose. This is kind of in that same category. On top of that, this is a regular trap card, so... It's a bit hard to set up because most of the negation usually comes in the form of the person that went, I would say, the person that went uh, first. They set up all their traps and stuff. 
so if you want to play this card, you have to set it. Then on your opponent's turn, they must negate some form of activation on against you, and then you would use Witch's Strike. Now the thing is, if your opponent is going second, if they play like some sort of counter trap, it's likely going to be Red Reboot to stop your traps from going off. So if you get Red Rebooted, you can't even use Witch's Strike to begin with. So uh, there's a bit of a limitation there in terms of speed and timing. It's not exactly the most ideal in my opinion, uh, but it does give you that win condition. So who knows? Maybe it'll be really, really good. Okay, uh, in terms of price point, I would say this one's going to be between 35 40 on the release and probably going to go down unless uh, someone actually finds a way to abuse it. Maybe they use Trap Trick and then... Trap Trick is probably the best way of actually using this card in my opinion because they don't see it coming and all of a sudden, boom, their entire hand is dead. That's probably the best way to use this card. Uh, so that you can fetch it out after they make a mistake of negating a card. Uh, cards like Ghost Bell is going to lose a little bit of flavor. In fact, I think this card is strong enough to shape up the meta for people to preemptively not run certain forms of negation. But seeing that the format is moving more towards counter traps, looking at Salamangrates, looking at Orcus, this card may have a lot of potential in has potential to go up in the future but right now we're not exactly in a meta where we are focused on negating the activation of stuff just yet so aside from like a uh, ghost spell so that's my price range for it next we have illusion dragon phantasma this is that hand trap of um for link summoning it's kind of like a maxi it's more like a saryuja in my opinion that's a hand trap that also can uh, stop your opponent going too far. You get to pop their cards and you get to negate their stuff that target your monsters. But if your opponent's special summons out a Link monster, uh, you can special summon this card from your hand and then draw cards equal to the number of Link monsters your opponent controls plus one. So you're guaranteed to get a plus one to replenish this card that was in your hand. And then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and then uh, you have to shuffle cards back from your hand uh, equal to the number of Link monsters they control. So that plus one replenishes this card and now you have a 24 body on the field and then if your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a monster you control including a say per se this card you can discard one card and then negate the activation and if you do destroy that card and then somehow you can get witcher strike by this yeah i don't know i don't know how i feel about this but no no, no i'm just kidding here uh, it's still a pretty good card you get to recycle your hand make a dead hand not so dead dig deeper into the deck i mean if they go into like full combo mode and they make like two or three links even if they just make two through two links you get to draw three cards and the Put back too which is like a graceful charity uh, a lot of interesting things can happen with this and it's like a hand trap that leaves a 24 body shortening the reach of damage so in my opinion this card is like 30 on the release and depending on how popular it is it could settle to like 20 or it can go up to 40 so it's got a good range next psychic wielder ha huh, this card was common and now it's a secret rare I guess it's pretty good if you control a level 3 monster that's not uh, per se the um, a psychic monster or not psychic wielder. Uh, you can special summon this card from your hand. So it's basically a free summon from the hand. That means if you're playing Sneaky Snake or Snake, then you can just jump this card out. You're guaranteed a free summon from this card. So that's pretty neat. And uh, if you're playing BA, I can see why you would play this card because you get additional level 3s that can spam out Dante and... If you want to play level 3, apparently in TCG is going to be hell of expensive. Uh, so, what can I say? Expectations for this card? Uh, probably going to be around 30 on the release and probably sticking around 30. Like, I don't see it dropping or going up. I think it's just going to settle around there. It's likely to drop, of course, by supply and demand. The more it gets into the market, the more it's going to be easy. But if someone wins with this card, it's just going to spike it up and just going to keep it there. But being that it is so generic, and if you use this card to synchro as well, because it is a tuner. Uh, just because it's a tuner, you can go into some, some six synchros now, basically for free, with Snake. And this card is just easy. You can even go into, I guess if you're playing BA, you can go into Virgil if you really want to go into Virgil. But uh, it gives you that option. You can even go into Trish. And, I don't know, that's just an option there. But when you do Synchro with this card, uh, whatever that you Synchro into, you get to pop a monster on the field with less attack than the Synchro monster that uses as a material. So, there's lots of value to this card. You basically trade one for one at the very least as a part of a Synchro, uh, synchro play. Trickstar Live Stage, this is... 20 bucks, my guess, uh, on release. I think 
Trick Stars are getting a lot of support because they are also getting the uh, Carabin, and that's their uh, Trick Star Honest play. And I think they are changing up how they play out this uh, particular deck, and they're going to focus on using the extra deck uh, of the all the weirder uh, Link monster in the Trick Star engine. So this is the one card that's actually letting them move in that direction. It's a token generator, so you can actually Link spam with Trick Stars. So. Now we have TG Trident Launcher. This one special summons out three TG monsters, helping you give quick access to those really hard to summon uh, synchro monsters in TG. I believe there are new TG support in this set as well. That is, uh, well, it's, I'm guessing it's a nice card, but I think there could have been better options for the Secret Rare if they really wanted to juice us. They could have put Sunlight Wolf here, but they didn't. So Konami's actually been doing a lot of good things towards the player base, making sure that cards are accessible. Next, we have Super Anti Kaiju War Machine Mecha Thunder King. So, this is the TCG exclusive Kaiju hand trap. It feels like a hand trap. It's like after the fact that you get Kaiju, you can use this. However, it only works for semi nomies to regular monsters in the main deck. So, during the main phase, quick effect, you can discard this card, banish a Kaiju monster your you control that is owned by your opponent, then you can special summon one monster from your graveyard. It's a monster reborn hand trap. As long as you control a kaiju owned by your opponent, so your monster must die. So say you have a nat beast that's really just screwing them over, and all of a sudden they throw a kaiju at you, then you can be like, oh, in response to you kaiju summoning on my side of the field, I am going to discard this card and banish that kaiju that you own, and I'm going to special summon that nat beast back onto the board. Yay! So, yeah, and then during the end phase, this card will summon itself out of the graveyard, so you get both your monster and this card back. So it's not even a minus, even if you protect your monster. Pretty decent card, depending on the format. If kaijus get really, really popular, then hard to say. Uh, I think kaijus will be a little bit more popular with more going second decks uh, coming about, and BAs, they play kaiju as well, so... This is a pretty good option. Unfortunately, Thunder Dragon players, you cannot abuse this card because if they're killing off your uh, Colossus or your Titan, it doesn't work just because they are uh, Nomis, and that means they have a very specific method to be special summoned. So that's how it is. It doesn't say ignore summoning conditions at all. So that is... Uh, that's the Kaiju guy. I think he's going to be one of the cheaper ones out here. Maybe about 10, 15 bucks. Uh, but he can potentially rise. They all have good potential. But I think the worst pull of them all would be the Valkyrie. Not to say that the Valkyries are the worst. It's just that they're the least popular. Therefore, they're going to be the cheapest. Uh, this could break Valkyrie if this card is special summon. So Valkyrie uh, Seshed. Uh, if this card is special summon, you can special summon one Valkyrie monster from your deck except for Sesh. During your main phase, you can send the top two cards of your opponent's deck to the graveyard. Okay, you get a bit of milling effect. I don't exactly know how Valkyries play. I know that they have this uh, whole this goddess back row thing that can uh, ruin your opponent's turn in some way or form. Okay, well, this one is basically a tour guide. However, this card needs to be special summoned. If you have the correct cards to special summon out this card, you can one for one this card too. Uh, that gives you free additional summon, turning that one for one, literally one for one, because it doesn't cost you any cards in your hand. Uh, then you can play this card. My guess, this card is going to start off, uh, based on popularity anyway, it's going to be about 10 bucks or so, and maybe dropping down to five, unless we see a top. If we see a top with this uh, Valkyrie deck, then maybe it will become much more, say, I don't know, maybe 30 bucks if it does happen. But I don't know. I don't really see the potential in Valkyries just yet. And that's my price point for these guys. Let's go on to some of the stuff that I'm really, really excited about. All right, for my five picks of really hype cards, I'm really excited for these ones, especially some of the imports. But let's start with the cover card, Boral Load Savage Dragon. If this card is synchro summon, you can equip one Link monster in your graveyard to this card and if you do put Boral counters equal to that monster's link rating and then you get basically free card effect negations uh yeah so this pretty good card or effect negations that's very generic it only negates the activation but you have to be very careful if your opponent is going to use witch's strike against you again seems like they're setting things up for witch's strike but anyways next up we have sub terra guru finally this card has been confirmed for tcg uh will this put sub terra on the map 
I think so. This card is very annoying. When you flip this card, you can add a sub terror card from your deck to your hand, except for a sub terror guru. You can target one other face of uh, monster on the field, change both of them into face down defense positions. This effect can only be activated uh, during either player's turn if you control another sub terror card. Super annoying. It's an ignition effect that turns into a quick effect. Like, if you guys are annoyed by snow, this card is just as annoying. And the more annoying thing about uh, sub terror guru is that for sub terrors, if they have face down cards, they can activate other cards. And if you, if you combine this with fiendish, it's a very scary thing. I've dealt with it. They've got this loop thing going on where they basically control you. So there's a lot more control moving forward. Next, we have Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. This is something I'm really excited about. I'm glad this one's not a secret. Rare. This is one of those good things Konami did to us. A really popular archetype, basically getting a low rarity treatment. Which also makes me worry a little because this is only a rare and you need three copies of this. So you're going to get it. But it also makes me worry that if the deck is too strong, it, that means they can get hit harder just because they're low rarity. It's just how it is. Like think about how uh, the performance stuff got really nerfed in the beginning because they were all basically common. But this is another card I'm really hyped about and I'm looking forward to playing this. I'm looking forward to seeing this in the meta as it will be the next cheap top tier deck. Then we have Orchestrated Nightmare. Another cheap card available. This card is summonable through uh, Nightmare uh, Mermaid. So if you want to set up your new plays, you can go into a Mermaid play instead through hopefully the structured deck of Salamangrates will give us um, a Formood Skipper. Then we can just turn our Formood Skipper into a Unicorn. Uh, and then we can immediately link that into the Mermaid giving us that setup. But that's uh, something we can hope for. But this is a really exciting card because it basically gives you a foolish burial for any of your orcus monster so that's something i'm pretty excited about and of course for anyone playing madolce we have madolce petting Cessor. i think that's what they're calling it i don't exactly know why they're changing up the name but regardless i've been already playing this card in proxy form it is amazing it makes it so that madolce uh, Magellene isn't a dead card when you open with it, and one card, Magellene, can lead to a full-on OTK thanks to the extension of this card, giving you more tethering out of the deck, more of everything thanks to Mindulce. Those, those, those are the cards I'm excited about, not to mention there's like guard dragons. But if you're looking forward to a more thorough analysis, stay tuned for part two where I go through every single card in the set briefly so that you know what's going on what's coming up maybe you'll find a hidden gem in there that is super high potential that maybe will change up the game entirely but i'm gonna run through every single one my life point will drain for each card mentioned so hit that thumbs up to give me some life and uh yeah that's all i got for this video guys if you guys enjoyed this video looking forward for all the support maybe tell your friends so that the community can boom once again this is the set to do so it's savage it's great and yeah, if you like this video, hit me with a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more stuff from MST.TV, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, don't forget to hold on to MST.TV. And I'll see you guys in the next... Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MST.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV, and I'll see you next time.